Welcome to 30 Days of Marketing Mavens. 30 days, 30 experts, 30 marketing niches. Brought to you by Profit Master Business Solutions. More leads, more sales, and more revenue for your small or medium-sized business. Click findnewrevenue.com to learn more. Now here's your host, Howard Walpoff. Welcome back to 30 Days of Marketing Mavens. Again, I'm Howard Walpoff. Thank you so much for joining us today. And uh, it's also brought to you by Profit Master Business Solutions. And today we're very excited to have Gail Gardner with us. She's a really amazing woman whose hands are in, in just involved in so many different things. She's a small business, small business marketing strategist at GrowMap. She's a social media influencer and community manager at the Biz Sugar Mastermind community. She is Digital Scouting's top 100 social media marketing influencers. She also was allbusiness.com's top 50 most influential people in small business marketing, and she's won three Small Business Trends Influencer Awards, and that's from smallbiztrends.com. That's smallbiztrends.com. Just some amazing uh, things that she's been involved with. And Gail, thank you so much for joining us today. I'm happy to be here. So you have a very strong and, uh, and varied career. How did you get started in marketing? <laughs> I actually fell into it. After 23 years at IBM, I resigned, not knowing for sure what I would do, thinking I might build websites for horse people. And a neighbor who built horse walkers, which is like a thing with four arms on it that you put a horse on. If you watch racing, you might have seen it. Anyway, he had very expensive horse walkers. And every time I went to town, I saw him with another one loaded up heading out. And I said, where are you going? And he'd say, oh, Oregon or Washington or California or Florida. And I, and this happened about three times. And I said to him, Hey, you know, how are you selling all these horse walkers all over the world, all over the States? Right. And he goes, Oh, I don't know. (laughs) He said, what do you mean? You don't know. He says, a friend of mine is advertising them on the internet. I said, well, where? He goes, I don't know. (laughs) So I went home, I started searching, and I finally found this horrendous GeoCities site that advertised the walkers and AdWords ads. Actually, it might have been Yahoo ads that far back, but it was right at the beginning of pay-per-click. Okay. And so then I tracked him down and I said, hey, how much are you spending per month to advertise? And he said, oh, 25 or $30. And I almost fell over. I said, twenty-five or thirty dollars, and you're how many are you selling a month? Two or three or four? And they're five thousand dollars a piece. Mm-hmm. And his were the most expensive brand you could buy. And I thought, wow, talk about a return on investment. So I got into pay-per-click for five and a half years. I did nothing but pay-per-click. Back then we had Yahoo, and then we had Google AdWords. And I got started by offering to run the ads, doing it for free for my Mennonite neighbor who sold business, buildings, you know, they built buildings. Okay. And he wasn't that jazzed, but he mentioned it to his brother-in-law who built gazebos and he wanted to do it. So I advertised gazebos and then later I did advertise the business, the buildings. I had built their websites for him. And so I got into it. I was very serious about pay-per-click, but I knew where it was going. I could see... Google taking all my best long tail keyword phrases and, and broad matching them so that you had to outbid. It was a zero sum game. You had to be able to outbid the, the guy with the biggest, deepest pockets instead of five cents a click paying $2 a click back then, probably 20 or 30 now. And so I knew that's a bad thing to do. So I quit after five and a half years, just quit and started doing small business marketing strategy. That was in 2009, and that's when I launched GrowMap. That's, it's pretty amazing what you're able to experience and, and uh, firsthand at the beginnings of where uh, pay-per-click was going at that point and see those successes too. Yeah, it was really great back then. I called it the golden age of pay-per-click, which is long gone. Now there isn't even exact match anymore. It's a, it's a whole different world from what that was, but uh, somehow, somehow Google is, is, is still uh, developing programs and, and, and making their dollars for uh, to driving business to people. Um, but so you started working specifically doing strategy for small businesses. And so what kind of businesses were you uh, developing concepts for? All right, so I prefer to work with small and very small businesses. 
And so some were e-commerce sites. I particularly like Yahoo sites because their shopping cart worked. In the early days, all these people thought they should code their own shopping carts and they didn't work half the time. It was, it was, it was bad. <laughs> and so I actually went after Yahoo stores on purpose. Those were my best pay-per-click clients. But I had little tiny businesses too that they might only spend 50 or or $100 a month. That was their whole ad spend. So I had people in pay-per-click from $50 a month to $50,000 a month. Wow. Uh, an agency subcontracted a big spender to me. And I tripled their traffic at the same ad spend because I finally talked them out of always bidding for first place, which they didn't need to do. Um, but yeah, very small businesses, mom and pops, startups, one person shows, you know, your typical local business or e-commerce store. And it's, it's, it's what you said is, is true. Some of these companies that do not fully understand how the process works can't get out of their way because they have in their head, it has to be the number one because that's what someone else told me. Yeah, that's kind of an ego thing most of the time. Mm -hmm. There are some very limited number that should bid for first place all the time. I had one client where they needed to be first or second. And if they were first, they got 70% more than if they were second, they got 30%. And if they were third or lower, they didn't get anything, but they were selling very cheap commodities, you know, that were, they couldn't even advertise them now because they would, wouldn't be enough profit in them to do it. But they needed to be first or second because people would go there and buy, right? They didn't like comparison shop because it was only, $15. Sure. But um, most people, my poorest customers, we bid for the bottom of the first page. And if we got bumped to the top of the second page, we didn't really care back then because they couldn't afford to bid higher than that. Okay. My best customers, I told them bid for third to fifth place because we don't want to get those auto, what I used to call automatic clicks. A person searches and they click on the first thing. They didn't even read it. They don't even know if it's what they searched for or what they wanted. And so the auto clicks on the first one, they back up, they click the second one. We want to be third because by then maybe they would think to read the ad and pick the one that actually made sense. It's a very good strategy and obviously a very uh, successful strategy for you and the, the clients you're working with at the time. Right. It worked back then. So it's a whole different world. If you're a tiny business and you're a you know, you just have a shoestring to do it. You don't have investors. You don't want to go into debt really deep. You have to be wiser. You have to have better strategy. If you have all the money in the world, you just throw money at it. You can do that. Something will work. And then you can focus on what worked. But the businesses I work with can't afford to do that. So at this point, you're still working with those types of businesses. And, and what are you uh, currently developing with them? What, what, what seems to be uh, working for them? All right. So the number one thing that... It, all people need, no matter whether you're a freelance writer or you're a small business, is processes. The difference between success and failure is being organized enough to stay on top of things, right? Otherwise, everything falls through the cracks, you lose business, you annoy your customers, and then you don't do very well. You want to be so organized that you impress everyone, and then they refer new customers to you. That's the cheapest way to get a new customer, and it works the best. Recommendations, referrals. And so the thing that I do that's kind of unique is I give them a pre-populated Trello board. You're familiar with Trello yes. and band boards. All right. So Trello is free. I have a board that's called a strategy board and it has pre-populated tasks in it, what they need to do. And they all start off in the, in the thing to start out on the left and then they move them over. So what I do is I tell them, okay, we're going to prioritize. We're going to take the first thing you need to focus on. First, you need to organize your site, get your site done right, right? And then you need to get your social, well, your email marketing set up, right? It has to be set up. You don't want to do social before you do email or you're, or you're not going to get, take advantage of the leads you make on social. And so I, basically, I give them a way to stay organized and a way to know what to do next in what order. Right. So never do your social before your email. If you're a local business, local is the most important. So you want to get your local listings, but you still want to claim your, your social accounts. And then that's really critical too. I, I tell them you have to have one username. You can't have two. Yes. You have to have one because if you have two, 
even I cannot remember which one you used on which social network to go find you. Make it easy, people will tag you. Make it hard to remember, and having two makes you hard to remember. People aren't gonna bother to tag you. And so you have to find one, use knowem.com. You can look it up for free and see at least all the major social networks are available before you choose that username. You have to claim all your usernames everywhere because those are gonna rank, right? The two things every business needs is if you have a physical address you're willing to put out there, you need your local listings even if you're operating nationally or internationally. And the second is even if you're local, you wanna claim all your social networks. You don't have to use them all. All you do is claim it with your username so that if someone looks for you there, you're there. And in your bio say, you know, this is where you can find me at your website. And we're most active at LinkedIn or Facebook or Twitter or whatever you choose, Instagram. It doesn't matter. Just use all the other bios to funnel people to your site and the social network you're very active on. So you have a presence. And there's, those two things can outrank almost everything on the Internet. So not only will you at least show up, even if your website has no incoming links and no authority and not even any content to speak of, right? If you have those two things in place, you're going to show up on searches for your company. It gives you credibility and it protects you from bad stuff. I've seen little businesses. One guy had a beef with them, wrote a post about them. Maybe somebody that's a little bit influential somewhere. And then that got republished 30 places. And when you search for the business name, they haven't even got off the ground yet. And their whole first page is full of this one bad thing over and over and over. You can insulate yourself from that. If you have your local listings and there's tons, there's hundreds of places. Yes. And you don't even have to go list with them. All you do is take, there's these places you can pay $100, $200, give them your information and they populate all those databases out there for you. There's hundreds of those that can, and then a lot of big ones that'll stay, Google, Bing, super pages, yellow pages, all those kind of sites and then your social accounts, and you look like a big business, and, and unless you get a ripoff report, which can outrank some of those, and can end up on page one, or you really make those black hat people mad at you, and they make it a vendetta to keep, you, keep negative stuff about you on page one, and they can do it. Um, except for those two things, you'll be insulated from somebody writing a post that blasts your, your business, or you personally. And so those are my priorities. You've got to get organized. you got to do your email marketing, get it all set up first, then do your social, have your local done. And then you can think about other stuff to do. But those are the priorities. And most people kind of like have no idea. So they do a little of this and a little of that and a little mm -hmm. of something else. And they're not getting anywhere. They're, they're barely treading water out there. These are, are really, they're, they're foundation pieces. And if you do it right, you can have a foundation that's going to last throughout the internity of the business and keep you visible the way that you always hoped you'd be visible. It's uh, a lot of it's, it's, it's great direction for small businesses. A lot of people who have not even claimed my Google, my business page and, uh, and, and already the struggle has started because of that. Yeah. See that. And that's big. I knew a guy who had a, a mobile mechanic business with three, me three mechanics staying busy all the time until one day, boom, no more business. And what we found out was his Google My Business account had been claimed by a competitor who went in and changed the phone number. Fortunately, we were able to get, get it back and he got the business back. But Google My Business, if you don't do anything else, you have to go claim that so that someone else can't easily claim it. You have to, that's why you have to do this. And that's the one I, I say, even if you use a, an aggregator, to get yourself listed, the important ones go out there and use them. You can upload coupons, upload videos and photos. Mm -hmm. Google, unfortunately, is, is a monopoly, which some people think is great because it makes it easier. You only have to do it one place, but it's really dangerous. Don't only do Google, please, because even if you do everything else well, if Google decides to make you disappear, you're going to lose more than half, even if you had everything else you could possibly do. Don't make it all 
all of your business, right? Don't have only that one thing. That's really important. But the other, the other thing I want to say about processes and Trello boards is you can keep track of stuff, right? So you're going to have all these logins and you're going to have images and ads that you develop and maybe some white papers or some downloadable things if you're a B2B. Put them all in one place on the Trello board. And there's actually places that in my Trello board that says attach images here, attach white papers here to give them an idea. Oh, I guess I should have some of those things and to save them there. It will save you so much time. Nothing is harder than trying to remember where you saved something that you did two years ago that you want to renovate and bring back to life. You have to be organized. And so that's my number one thing. Be organized or you won't even know if you're getting anywhere or not. It's so true. And even, even simply when you, you look back, like I know I have files I've just saved to my desktop and know they have to move somewhere. But once I've moved them, I know exactly where they are and can and, and always have them as, as reference points and, or looking them up for a client. Um, if you just keep saving to a, just in, on the simplest way, you're saving file to one folder, you'll never find anything. So true with all the other pieces with, uh, with, with all these different tools, you need to make sure that you know exactly where they fit in the toolbox and put them back in the right place. Yes, hopefully by now, people have had computers long enough to kind of understand the file structure. But at the beginning, it was hope. very confusing. Mm -hmm. And so you have to think about this. I'm going to give them another tip. So you want to have in your, dis in your directory of your main directory, you need to file for clients, for vendors, for collaborators, you know, and whatever else you do a lot of, have a, have a file for that and then have sub files under those. Right. So I have, if it's a business, even if they're not really my client, I put them in the, in the folder clients because I know that's where I'm going to look. I also have a folder for businesses I buy from. Okay. Right. So if I buy from a, a small business a lot, anything that happens, communications with them or whatever I put in their folder. And so I'm very organized, but I have a lot of folders and a lot of subfolders. But I had the advantage. I worked for IBM for 23 years and I was on the internet in 1994. In fact, I had the biggest horse site on the internet from 1994 to about 1999. And so, but I had a T1 line to play on. Most people, I don't know if people know what that is. So back then we had dial up, yep. right? The days of AOL, 2400 bought, and then wow, it was fast. We had 21.6 dial up. A T1 line is the trunk that feeds all the 21.6s. And I had a friend that owned an ISP. So the way I built that site is I went to his office. I sat on at a computer directly attached to the T1 line. Mm -hmm. And so I could gather, I gathered every horse site on the entire internet. I had so many that my site made $400 a month from, from AdSense in the early days. Oh, wow. I ranked for everything horse because I was the only person that I guess had a T1 line and bothered to gather every, there wasn't a good search engine back then. Yep. So I had, and I had a page, plus I was doing pay-per-click by then. So I knew in the old days, Yahoo, you could see how much people were bidding. So I could do a search related to horses and see what had the highest bids and then build a page specifically for that. And so thanks to Yahoo, I made more money from Google. <laughs> Well, it, again, having the right tools and having the knowledge to uh, implement them pays off in the end. So that it's, it's just the amazing experience from, the, again, the wild, wild west of the, of the internet in the 90s to where people are now and how that all translates. It's, it's great that you are providing that for your clients and, and just an amazing information that you were able to share with us today. So I thank you for that. It's all fun. <laughs> especially when you're doing it right. The main thing is great customer service. Make sure your customers know you love them. Tell them. If you send people packages, tuck little notes in the package that say, hey, we really appreciate your business. Um, here's a coupon or you know, some kind of special deal. Or we, know, we really appreciate your business. Here's a little gift for you. It doesn't even have to be any, hardly anything. It could be a pin. It could be one little package of some kind of snack right if you sell food you know that they always buy organic send them an organic treat they might like they might end up ordering more of them you know the main thing is 
people switch businesses because they don't think the businesses they buy from now care. Mm -hmm. If they know you care, they're not as likely to go buy somewhere else or even look to see who's cheaper than you if they know you care. In a restaurant, one bad waitress can destroy your business. So the thing you have to do is make your customers so delighted that they tell other people. And if they complain, be happy. If they complain, that means they cared enough to spend time to tell you. And then you do something to fix it. And then they'll tell everybody. Yep. They might, they'll tell one person if they're happy. They'll tell 100 people if they're really mad. And they'll tell 1,000 people if they were really mad and you fixed it. And so that's something to keep in mind. And then one other weird tip, and I don't even know if you can find this anymore, but did you ever see the show The Prophet? Yes, I've seen it. Great show. Watch The Prophet, because, and it's P-R-O-F-I-T, yep. not the other way. The Prophet, because he goes into businesses that are struggling and tells them what they're doing wrong and how to fix it. And I think you can learn a lot from that. You'll see yourself in, oh, maybe I'm doing some of that. And you can help your own business by watching that show if it's available anywhere. I actually saw episodes on YouTube. Yeah, I think that thanks so online, you're able to find, uh, find them in a couple of places. But that's just, you don't usually get the opportunity to kind of step out of yourself and see what you're doing within your business. But in a, in a, in a show like that, there are some similarities to what other people are doing that you can relate to and, and, and learn from and hopefully grow from. So that's, that's a great tool. So thank you for that. Yeah, you have to step back. As they used to say, don't be so busy working in your business that you don't have time to work on your business. Very true words to live by. And, uh, and, and that really, really winds things up very nicely to, to what you shared. So, so Gail, thank you so much for joining us. This is really amazing. Every time I think of it, there's, there's, there's a new thing that, uh, that, that, I'm, that I'm learning on one of these videos that is, is now, this, this is the top thought now I come up with another one, and just the, the uh, just having the, those um, that that structure for your business really is just makes it so simple to uh, get you off on the on the right track. So thank you for that. Thank you for having me. I can't wait to see the other episodes that you've done. Looking forward to that as well. So what's the best way for people to uh, connect with you if they're interested in, in learning more? All right. So uh, my website is growmap.com. That's G R O W. M A P like growing a garden and a map like a roadmap. And I'm also the community manager at biz sugar. And we invite you all to come out to our mastermind community. It's free, totally free to join. And all the advice there is free. I ask me questions and I'll answer them. And we have some great discussions with really super expert guests. And we just did a big small business marketing survey. It's the challenges people have. They told us what their challenges are, and now we're going to be doing discussions and having guests about the challenges our members told us that they have. And so that's a great way. I'm easiest to reach on Skype, where my username is GrowMap. I hate email. You can email me, but I may not see it. You can message me on LinkedIn. You can talk to me on Twitter or Facebook. And everywhere in the world, I am GrowMap. Exactly the way it's supposed to be. So, Gail, again, thank you so much, and uh, I truly appreciate it. This, this was fantastic. Thank you. I can't and, wait to see the others. And everyone else, thank you so much for joining us. It's always great that you're, you're learning from experts like Gail, and I hope you're uh, gaining uh, insight from the others as well. Again, 30 Days of Marketing Mavens brought to you by Profit Master Business Solutions. Go out, have a great day today, and we'll see you next time.